just wanted to say welcome to everybody who's coming in. I'm so happy that we're able to do this event today. Um, it really, we pulled it together at the last minute and I couldn't do it without all of you. Um, and, you know, this is just bringing us together. To, we, had, we went through a rough year and let's hope 2021, you know, we could you know, continue to just all work together to bring our writing you know, forward together. You know, we all help each other in this community. It's a small community. And um, I'm just really happy to be a part of this day. And thanks so much for being here. Okay, here we go. It is now six o'clock and we're going to the third segment of this all day reading, which has really been exciting, really fabulous. Um, and I know we're gonna keep the quality up. We've got a really, really great two hours scheduled here. Some really talented people who I just adore. Some people I don't know that I'm really excited to hear about. So um, the ground rules are pretty simple. It's three minutes uh, per person. Uh, we will warn you when you hit the three minutes and then shortly thereafter we'll mute you if you keep on going. Uh, we hope that won't be the case. It really hasn't been the case for the most part today. People have been really good. It's been going really, really smoothly. Um, and happy new year to everybody. It is 2021. We have uh, 20 days until the Trump era is in our rear view mirror and hooray for that. We can all breathe more easily. And then after that, of course, we need to hold the next set of motherfuckers to the fire and let them know that we haven't gone away just because it's another four years till an election. All right. That's my ranting. Welcome, everybody. I am going to start first with a quick bit of Walt Whitman. Um, this is actually the opening of Leaves of Grass, and it says, of um, oneself I sing. Oneself I sing. A simple, separate person, yet utter the word democratic, the word and moss. A physiology from top to toe I sing. No physiognomy alone, nor brain alone, is worthy for the muse. I say the form complete is worthier far. The female equally with the male I sing. Of life immense in passion, pulse, and power, cheerful for freest action formed under the laws divine the modern man i sing walt whitman good way to start the year all right next we're going to start with a little bit of a musical interlude to break it off to get us in to break some ice uh he's a really lovely gentleman uh, i have performed with him a few times i really adore him i can't wait to be in person with him again france for advice please unmute yourself and you have your three minutes Thank you, Matthew. So this is a song from uh, Georges Brassens. I know Mo is in Paris, so he might uh, relate to that. Hi, Mo. Uh, I'm sending the link with the chat right here. Les bourgeois, qu'avril bourgeonne, que les cendres gèrent, ils sont fiers et contents. Ce pigeon est aimé, trois jours par saint pigeon. Ça lui suffit, il sait que l'amour n'a qu'un temps. Ce dindon a toujours émis sa destinée. Quand vient le moment de mourir, il faut voir cette genoix en pleurs. C'est là que je suis né. Je meurs près de ma mère. J'ai fait mon devoir. Elle a fait son devoir. C'est à dire que on que elle nu le souhait impossible. Elle nu aucun rêve de lui. Qu'un désir de jonque, emportant sans rameur sur un fleuve inconnu. Mais tous sont ainsi faits, vivre la même vie. Toujours pour ces gens-là, cela n'est point hideux. 
ce canard n'a qu'un bec qui n'est jamais en vide ou d'un ample les avoir ou bien d'en avoir de n'avoir aucun besoin de baiser sur les lèvres et loin des songes vains loin des soucis cuisants possédés pour tout cœur un viscère sans fier un coucou régulier garantie disant ces gens bien heureux tout à coup dans l'espace si haut qu'il semble aller lentement un grand vol en forme de triangle arrive plein les passes où vont-ils qui sont-ils comme ils sont loin du sol regardez-les passer ce sont des sauvages ils vont où leur désir le veut par-dessus le monde et bois et met les vents et loin des esclavages l'air qu'ils boivent ferait éclater vos poumons gardez-les avant d'atteindre sa chimère plus d'un l'aile rompu et lui sans plein les yeux mourra ces pauvres gens aussi femme et mère, et ça veut les aimer aussi bien que vous mieux. Pour choyer cette femme et nourrir cette mère, il pouvait devenir volaille comme nous, mais ils sont avant tout des fils de la chimère, des assoiffés d'azur, des poètes, des fous. Regardez les vieux coques, genoix édifiantes. Rien de vous ne pourra monter aussi haut que, et le peu qui viendra, deux à vous, c'est leur fiante. Les bourgeois sont troublés de voir passer les gueux. Regardez les vieux coques, genoix édifiantes. Rien de vous ne pourra monter aussi haut que et le peu qui viendra. Vous avouez, c'est leur fiante. Les bourgeois sont troublés de voir passer les gueux. Beautiful, Francois, thank you so thank much. Thank you, my friends. What a lovely way. Stay safe. Thank you, you too. Okay, um, so next we have, uh, okay, I'm going to give you a couple people. Um, uh, we're going to do first, I think, uh, George Wallace, then uh, Jane Ormerod, and then Thomas Fucoloro will be our, and then Puma Pearl. Those are our first four, all right? So, George, are you there? I am here. All right, you got your three minutes, George. Go ahead. Great, thank you. I wrote this um, New Year's Eve. The New Lord's Prayer. Our Father who lives in all the empty spaces. Our Father who feeds us from his munificent hand. Emptiness of time. Emptiness of desire. Ragged, wild emptiness of suffering, long, wind-blown plains. Our Father, who led us from captivity to captivity, led us from light and sanctuary to sanctuary and light. Who taught us to fornicate according to his sacred dictum. Oh, melancholy those who would oppose them. Our Father, guilt machine, cross cut, saw. Jugular juice maker, raw impulse allocator. Our Father, Death Definer and Cement Mixer. Our Father, who carves suspicion into our hearts and soldiers us up to fight like heavenly angels to spread his name amongst nations. All smoke and incense, this one. Our Father, who taught us to fill our mouths with approved songs of faith and bitterness. Hallowed be thy name, 
hallowed be thy providence, to lift up our hands, to use them like shields against the human darkness. Hallowed be thy somberness of psalm. Thy kingdom come, thy will, let us rub salt into the wounds of our enemies while we praise you, be done. On earth as it is, uh, this shelter, this creed, this letter of the law, this carved out rock, this holy subterranean cavity of psycho-spiritual gases in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, because all children, great and small, suffer equally in the nakedness of your gaze, because we come to you, from you. Give us this day the stain of Cain, spread your name across the civilized world, the gospel of your blood and sacrifice. Oh, bless these clerical extrapolations. Thy will be done. We offer you fresh narratives. We offer you clockwork motets. We offer ourselves our nothingness. We offer you no touch conservatism. We offer you scripture, reliquaries, other debasements. We offer you the abject negation of our most fundamental carnal nature. On earth as it is in heaven, uh, our trespasses, our guilt, our daily bread, our guilt, 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 and forgive us, our Father, who caught us up in this fly trap narrative, this tongue of spite, this rudeness of impulse, this grand glandular profanity, imperial gesture of sweet, awful appetite and the sweat and poisonous flesh of others amongst whom uh, you have made us wander. Forgive us the sheer weight of being your chosen ones. And okay, yes, those who trespass against us, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, forgive them too. For thine are the threats and inconveniences. For thine are the candy canes and twinkly lights. For thine is the slurpy and the glory hall. And for thine the smut and beat down unrest of midnight. For thine is the power and glory and the dogma and the false prophets and the sadistic little satyrs who run like goateed monkeys in our mean little hearts. To shit thy judgment, to lay thine enemy down, to forget you not, but make you forget fragrant palate in the manger. Raise up your voices, sisters, brothers, forever and ever. Amen. So loud you drown out the cries of the suffering. Thank you. And thank you, George. Thank you so much. That was really beautiful. That was really beautiful. Again, everybody, three minutes. I'm trying very hard not to mute anybody or shut anyone down, but uh, please. Uh, you know, we're, we're probably okay. It's been running very smoothly, but let's just try to keep to it. Okay, next we have Jane Ormerod. Jane, please, you've done it already. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Starring the way I arrived, the child, we appeared different, together turning topsy, every boat it seemed was wrong, and the cold we suffered. Some of us have always been mothers. The inherited ceramic marigolds, papers, cherubs, clouds, chestnuts, the end of frog line curtain nets, wells to wish then sink our dreams and show our prejudice. We cannot always hold others to the flame. Oh, so pretty they cry. Oh, aren't we pretty? Pretty every morning, pretty as junket, pink as junket, pretty as Christmas as discipline. Oh, futility is heavy. We all are still children and we come and we leave small as small as small as froglings. We are courage. We are the first muse. Oh, London, are we not pretty? I am an American child. My brother, the reptilian woman. Ah, here is the dancing room, the fours room, a little house with no bunny, the threes room, the dining room, the cook said child, the cook said whipsnade, whitstable, dunstable, dungeness, the cook said camber sands, the cook said never touch pinkness, the cook said treat your passport as slipper, bye bye child. 
Oh, London, we are household. We are chicken scraps, blancmange for the middle class. Sharp as the year I was born. You are a gift of fertility, the Christmas man said. And he rhymed Christmas with abortion and explained ignorance. Lectured me on the BBC and the regality issues of the day. Held me and called me Duchess. Said my brother was the American, but he saw my dress and thrust me to the title. I was a mother, and Duchess rhymed with whiskey when he saw my skirt and called the seasons. And people laughed because the mist is not always red, and the kisses he promised were just the BBC mispronunciation of attic. My favourite room is a coat hook. There is no record of my existence. I remain in the hole because they will look in the hole. I exist in this hole and, tr and truth is smaller than motherland. Everyone will always peek inside a hole. And my new mouth says, yes, I am your mother. Your mother wit, the wit of dust and core light. It is my turn on the trampoline. Finally, it is my turn. The cook, I say, it's smokescreen. Watch me, watch my lake and bunny. Watch me catch this pleasure as I bounce. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, Jane. Thank you so much. Great as always. Next, we have the always amazing Thomas Fucoloro. Good evening. Happy New Year. The title of this poem is Adlet. There is a commercial for an antidepressant called Latuda. In this commercial, there are real artists sharing their artwork before taking Latuda and then sharing their artwork after taking Latuda. These are their stories. Artist one says to artist two, I've noticed your style has really changed and progressed. What's your secret? Artist two says to artist one, Latuda. It's interesting how art is being used to sell pills. Usually pills are used to create art that is used to be sold to the pills, to sell more pills, to create more pills. It's interesting how art is being used. Side effects of using art, bum hip, Loss of taste or everything tastes like calamari. Occupational restlessness, difficult or no movement, sleepiness, drowsiness, or foaming at the mouth. Weight within community changes, placebo, open mic nausea, increases appetite for erectile function, distract, dry mouth, color scheme, blurred hearing, and erectile constipation. Why isn't creating art included in the list of antidepressants? Why aren't antidepressants included in the list of things artists do? Artist one says to the bottle of Latuda, how will I know when it's working? The bottle of Latuda replies, I already am, says the lobbyist. Creating isn't for everyone. Neither is fucking with your brain chemistry before you try. Oh, creating is for everyone, and so is fucking with your brain chemistry before you try. I am always fucking with my brain chemistry. It runs on an ever-changing climate mixture. Sometimes it boils too hot, but sometimes it is just right. There is no right seesaw for bipolar depression. After I took Latuda, my thighs swelled, and I was painting rainbows all the time. I I can't remember a brain where my time was this happy. I can't remember a happy where my brain was this time. I can't remember a time where my happy was this brain. I've never taken Latuda, but I have taken art out of context. Thanks. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you so much. All right, after Puma, we will have uh, Bill Constantine and David L. Sasser will be our next two readers after that. But now, Puma Pearl. Puma, unmute yourself. You're on. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for doing this. Uh, written, written this morning for someone I lost, and it's called Somebody's Angel. I was often ambivalent about New Year's Eve. If I had plans to go out, 
Suddenly, a television show I'd seen a hundred times became fascinated, and my sunken, beat-up brown couch, the most comfortable place in the universe. Or I had no plans, and I wish I did. Or I was out, and I wanted to go home. Or I was with someone, but not the right someone. Or I was with the right someone, but in the wrong shoes. Occasionally, it all aligned. In recent years, I thought less about it. There was somebody who cared where I was and what I was doing. If I needed a friend or just another shot of whiskey. But you're gone, and the fucking server ate up most of your emails. Even the comments on my published work have disappeared, and I don't know what happened to the manuscripts buried in your closet or the poems that never made it onto your blog. So there are no more New Year's Eve holiday debates about the merits of the Twilight Zone versus the Honeymooners. Baby, you're the greatest always one out in my book. And you'd put on Dexter or Monk, order a nice pork chop or a good steak, and let a poem marinate until the hands of the clock turned one more time and another year gone by. Getting older, you used to say. It all ain't so bad until it happens to you. You've become my junkyard baby, you wrote, my angel of the harbor. I'm hooked and thrashing at the same time. On New Year's Day morning, I decide to exercise, but it feels so corny that I sip an unfinished drink of Jameson from the night before and feel better until I lie down on the mat, and then I get dizzy, and I go back to bed. Fifteen minutes later, I eat a banana. It is in a perfect state of yellow, no longer hard and not too sweet. I try to finish this poem, but first I reread one of yours sent to me before the fall. She curls into love, you wrote, like a clenched fist, releasing trust the way a vagabond hitchhikes. There are no poems today that move me like yours do, not my own or the Paris Reviews or the St. Mark's Poetry Projects. There's nobody unafraid to write my name. Nobody messaging me with a longing for baseball and women who understand triple plays. So, for those of you who are thirsty today, have a drink. For those who are hungry, eat a poem. Later, it will rain, washing bits of 2020 into the gutter and down the drain, and little by little, a year will begin. Thank you. Thank you, Puma. Thank you so much. All right, as I said, so next we have uh, Bill Kell Sasser. Bill, feel free to unmute yourself. You have your three minutes. Thank you, Matthew. I have two short uh, poems. The first is Our Song. Ah, memories of the day's outrages cut sharply as we fade into sleep. What we leave behind still matters. We can't regret a world so strange. We sing like a rebel army marching through a village to sirens and applause. I grind my teeth. You stir and toss. We murder our fathers with loud guitars. We only awaken to what was lost and clamor in darkness for a past before the fascists came, reclaimed. Strum your banjo, I'll string a fiddle. The tune evolves, a tender call, to start a day again in the right key. And this is a uh, brand new one, Together Daily. Pandemic sort of thing. To together Daily, we've sipped, then drunk, loves refreshing ecstasies like caffeinated green tea. We nestle, paired ceramic doves, once all a flutter till storms abated. Wrapped in comforts, how big we become. Cruel time while leaving still holds us here. 
embracing all our time together. We're from the future, savoring now what's already dear. You're Venus, the night's most certain star. We each take our turn at the wheel, on the highway in a fast moving car, floor the drive and speed our spirits to heal. Our high beams pierce the darkening road. We're headed where even mountains erode. Beautiful. Thank you. Before we have uh, David L. Sasser, the next few after that will be Joe Rorty, uh, Dorothy Friedman, August, and Art Gatti. So, uh, David, take it away. The game. My shoulders slumped more with each passing family and friends. I easily imagine them shoulder perched, spirit legs carelessly dangling since they whisper incessantly in my ear. Oh, I don't mind. It's the natural order and they have nowhere to go. I take them in, find them seats, these retired players, new fans in the grandstand. They hoot, root their teams in turn or in chorus. Sometimes they're a nuisance insisting on a play I oppose or arguing among themselves till I step in, blow the whistle and remind them I'm in charge now. They usually smirk, whisper, just wait. I know what they mean, the raw deal. The bum contract Adam and Eve bargained. In the end, you come down to a blurb. You live, you die, your stuff goes to the curb. Oh, you fill the ears of everyone who loved you until inevitably they're called out too. And one more. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. Clockwork. Every year, come December's glitzy arboreal show, neighborhood trees glassed over head to toe with ice, each a sleeping beauty, waiting to be awakened by springtime's mint kiss, mercury congealing in a hard ball, ball at my thermometer's base, unable to rise to any occasion. My body turns foul. There is no po poetry in a pocket full of used tissues. No joy expressible with a frog creaky voice. I'll spare you all the alliteration of my drippy nose, the onomatopoeia of my hard, harsh hacking. All I want from you is a little sympathy, a few words of understanding, but some hot tea would be great. Make life easy. Put a reminder on your calendar. It's bound to happen again this time next year. Fantastic, David. Thank you so much. My Thank goodness, the days at Nightingale seem a million years ago now, don't they? Uh, oh, my God. But uh, a lot of us cut our teeth at those readings. They were really important in New York. So thank you for those. We all still owe you. All right. Uh, next, we have the always inimitable Joe Rorty. <laughs> Thank you. Happy New Year. Sometimes someone will lean in and say, you're really high, aren't you? That's when I know I'm in the right place. Every day, more and more, this is a world where you have to look over your shoulder. As Bresch put it, war is over, beware the peace. And even though the war has never ended, beware the peace. But when someone leans in saying, baby, are you as high as I think you are? I relax 
because someone understands. Intoxication may not be illumination, but Theseus made it out of the winding tunnels and dead ends following a thread that led to a shore where waited a boat that took him from love. Beware, beware the peace. Happy New Year. Uh, did I, was I muted when I said that? Thank you, Joe, so much. <laughs> uh, Dorothy, you're up next. Please take the mic. Dorothy, are you there? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you, yes. Oh, well, okay. All right. Uh, the money poem. <clears throat> One, everything is made of money. The sky sheen is platinum. The October leaves are bronze. The farmhouse windows are glazed in crystal. Nothing goes on that is not money. The supper hum from the houses, it is about money. The hero moving past the dirt road to the tennis courts, he is about money. All the automobiles are beeping with it. The poem in which the hand is a blue flower, the words are a screen, it is about money. Two, let's find out what is the great success and move on. It is not being black in America or the shape of the wind on white curtains. It is not money, old friends, or the sun. It is not the history of ideas. The great success is not he married her and they ate lobster or the sunny sides of eggs and perfect teeth. As usual, you get no answer at all, and there are no history books to refer to. We just come as close as we can and move on. And three, money never has to take a sandwich for lunch. Money never forgets things or flounders. Money will not save marriages or rotten novels. It will merely twist them into shape. Money is a postcard from the other side of the imagination. It's the aquamarine and the fake sunshine. Money has perfect knowledge of the world. It never cries, puts up with, or stretches. It never finds itself silly. Money never has to be arrogant or loving or grow gray. Money is, oh God, the true poet. Thank you. Hello? Dorothy, thank you so much. That was fabulous. Oh, okay. Glad you heard me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. All right. We have Arthur Gotti next. After Arthur, we will have um, Mo Seeger, Evie Ivy, and Megan Graposo. All right. Just unmute yourself and go. Gotcha. Sorry. Uh, yeah, this is an old collection. Um, I used to do a lot of work in Mexico. This is called Rapid Transit Eastern Sierra Madre. The third class Mexican bus, Tunaville trolley, little engine that barely could. Flecha Roja, the red arrow winding through the dense green of Guerrero's mountains in an año domini 1963. 50 centavos, hombre, no haughty three pesos and 20 that Estrella de Oro collects. Not the comfort coach of the businessman and turistas, but a smoke belching autobus of the people. The exhaust too foul to pump through a normal tailpipe. It puffs out of a vertical tin smokestack at the rear Wobbling on wheels incapable of speed, it meanders and weaves its way into each and every roadside cluster of hovels perched on steep jungle cliffs, seeking new fares, those, those laden with cages of, of chickens and a baby pig on the lap. 
women with torta sandwiches wrapped in plain paper poke baskets through the open windows and let the smells lure the hungry foreigners or travelers. This will be a long ride. Little sandwiches of cotija cheese, sliced chiles, pounded veal chops, and gorditas, large sugar and cornmeal cookies, a half dozen for a gringo nickel. The Ricos and the Norteños make the capital in four hours, but it is dark before the dim red arrow, stopping every 10 minutes, treats passengers to the valley lights of Mexico City far below. I awaken the old farmers with who daze and ignore the familiar countryside that is a wonder to these eyes with an ill-chosen expression uh, patched together from my basic Espanol. There, on a moonlit bluff alongside the old highway, stands a billy goat, quite large. And my expression of largeness brings peals of laughter to those from those locals. Mira, I began, pointing at, out the window, el, el cabron. At the dusty bus station, we all step off. And the smiles on the golden faces remind me I'm an amateur. No horns on me, um, but wearing a fool's cap nevertheless. I gather my stuff and turn quickly. Taxi. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Thank you so much. Now, from all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, next, we have Mo Seeger. Take it away, Mo. Hi, everybody. Laid in a pocket between darkness and dawn, City shit made with cheap lipstick and spent sweat. On the cushion, you rest your head upon at her place. She hands you a broken cigarette you light up off the burner on the stove. It's 5 a.m. over Boulevard Magenta. In a tree across the rue, pigeons squawk at two crows, fighting like dead cats and hungry dogs, and a big fat rat drags away the pizza with extra pepperoni dropped on the sidewalk, wetted red in wine oak piss. From the shadow, a woman steps by in shoes that kill, and you would follow her in a New York minute. And you want to kiss her breathless lips and just stand beside her in that dress so shapely as you have ever seen. And you ask, ça va, chérie? Oui, babe. Play me les fouilles mortes. And we surrender our carnal knowledge, put asleep by the hiss of the number nine metro. Bite me, bitch. I have a thing about biting, biting people to stay alive. Biting made the neighborhood boys cry. I masticate on red meat. Enter me, make a pact. Bite me, bitch. Go to a pocket of flesh. Tongue me like a knife. Wet me down and cut me up and take me to the razor edge. Incise me with your fangs. I will come like a free verb. Bite me, bitch. Plunge into my neck and dive deep and sink and pierce my thigh with your shrapnel nail. Rip me like an article of faith a dripping covenant, bite me, bitch. I take you by your knotted hair, your excited limbs flail wildly like two hungry canines stalking for the blood. We howl, we fill the empty night. Now bite, bite, and bite. Uh, I wanna kiss you. I wanna reach your hidden places. I want to kiss you where it hurts. I want to give you what seasons bring. I want to teach you the sacred sins. I want to seek you late at night. I want to spoon you through your dreams. I want to shape me to fit you right. I want to serve you if you please. I want to watch you all alone. I want to see your naked light. I want to find you outside in. I want to teach you sacred sin. I want to lick you everywhere. I want to taste your neck and crease. 
I want to eat you on bended knees. I want to serve you, if you please. <laughs> Thank you, Mo. That was, Mo, you're done. Thank you so much. That was really fabulous. That was that was great. Uh, I really love that. All right, next we have Evie Ivy. Hi, folks. I'm only going to read one. It's not the one that I was going to read, but I didn't want to spend time looking for the other one, so I substituted with this one. And it comes from my book, The Platinum Moon. And uh, it goes like this. And time is. And time is not a toy. It moves rampant on Earth. The beauty of days gone. What do they matter as it enables the new panorama? as if there was nothing lost among those broken pillars or skyline, what was buried among sand, water, or tight in the earth. Earth, who knows everything and lets it all go. Earth, once a mere ball of dust, tightened, tightened into the now. But time, time is everywhere, and yet lost there and nowhere as it moves with itself. Yes, time, time won't be a toy. Lots of love and time to everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you. Short and sweet, Evie, thank you so much. Happy New Year to you. All right, uh, next we're gonna have my partner in crime, Megan Raposo. After that, we will have Ron Colm, Holly Hep Galvin, and Mindy Levikov. Megan, you're on. All right, thank you. And uh, happy new year, everybody. Here's my new, year po new year's poem. Lighthouse. I take this rock and put it in my mouth. It's a mountain. It sinks. I grow. My trident heals in earth. I follow the instructions. I assume you find meaning in doing the right thing. I assume you know what I mean. Take this rock, put it in your mouth, crags, saliva, a mountain. There's a rock within each of us. The angle of a spiral determines smack or embrace, oppressive, reasonless. Sit up, stand where you are. It only seems cruel. I put the stone in my mouth, it means nothing. The river, the river, a swallow. I'm the mountain, my heart a flame, the start very far away. There was a fire in summer, now in winter. How's it here? A cushion, a cleared off patch of rug, salt drenched, catch defiant. The river, the river, the moon, Stay where you are. There's a stone inside each of us. Malachite, satellite, tourmaline, gray river rock. There's a trickster inside each of us fixing our point external. I put the stone in my mouth, the river, the river, the Pleiades. Take this rock and put it in your mouth. It's broken. Take this heart and put it in your mouth. It's a mountain. Take this sky, put it in your hands, let it expand a conversation between ring finger and thumb. Take this river and be still. I, the stillness, you, stillness. Take this stone, let it sink, rise. Don't worry about flame. We were made for fire. Take this flame, put it in the hollow of your broken heart and rise. Fill everything with light. Be the fucking mountain. Don't tell anyone. Thanks everybody. Happy New Year. Thank you. That's my partner in crime, Megan Craposo. Uh, and that was lovely. All right, next we have a man that I really adore, one of the sweetest humans on the planet. Uh, he'll say, no, I'm not. He'll say, no, I'm not a great poet. But he's both of those things, a fabulous human and a great poet, Ron Kolb. Thank you, Matthew. Happy New Year, everyone. This poem's called, I'll do three short ones. Going home, 
One of my favorite books is Anne Sexton's The Awful Rowing Toward God. In the last poem, she plays a game of cards with God and loses. Not too long after finishing that book, she went to her garage, started up her car and drove to heaven, perhaps to challenge God to a rematch. This is called It Takes a Pandemic and it's for Steve Zeitlin and City Lore. Um, they're members of Brevitas as many of the readers today are. It takes a pandemic to end a 50 year career of working in New York City's independent bookstores, which included the Strand, Eastside Books, New Morning, Coliseum Books, St. Mark's Bookshop and Poseman Books, which closed on March 16th due to the virus. The last book I sold there was Camus' The Plague. And that's a true story. <laughs> and the, the last poem is What Will Come of It All. I'm sitting in the Parkside Lounge with a good friend drinking way too many white Russians and bemoaning the state of the world. What's going to happen, I ask her. Well, she says, there will be good times and bad, periods of peace followed by periods of war, hot and cold, darkness and light. I love you all. Please have a good new year, everyone. Thank you. Ron, thank you so much. Great. Uh, next, we have Holly Hepgalvin. Hi, everyone. This is a new play. A child is in a cage. Did you hear that right? A child is in a cage. She is wearing pink pajamas. A woman approaches her. She smiles. I'm allowed to give her something if it will fit through the bars. She holds up a huge teddy bear. This was very expensive, but the tag says the money goes to help endangered polar bears that are suffering from climate change. She approaches the cage and holds up the bear. Here, this is for you. She tries to push it through the bars, but it won't fit. Oh, that's a shame. I really thought she tries to force it, but it only distorts the bear terribly. Okay, uh, I'll bring you something else. The woman exits. The child pulls on the bars, but it only manages to shrink the cage smaller. A child is in a smaller cage. She is wearing pink pajamas. A woman approaches her. She smiles. I'm allowed to give her something if it will fit through the bars. She holds up a huge Happy Meal. I was going to get her a Big Mac, but this one comes with a free toy, and I chose the healthy apples option rather than the French fries. She approaches the cage and holds up the Happy Meal. Here. This is for you. She tries to push it through the bars, but it won't fit. Oh, that's a shame. I really thought she tries to force it, but the food spills all over the floor. Okay, um, I'll bring you something else. The woman exits. The child pulls on the bars, but it only manages to shrink the cage smaller. A child is in a very small cage. She is wearing pink pajamas. A woman approaches. She smiles. I'm allowed to give her something if it will fit through the bars. She holds up an iPad. This way she can watch cartoons on the Disney Channel. She approaches the cage and holds up the iPad. Here, this is for you. She tries to push it through the bars, but it won't fit. Oh, that's a shame. I really thought she tries to force it, but it drops to the floor. They really need to give you a bigger cage. How can I give you something if it won't fit? The child points. Wait, which one are you pointing to? <laughs> when my daughter was small, she would have chosen the bear. She loves stuffed toys. She had a huge collection. She even took a few of them with her to college. The child points. Oh, and my son would have definitely taken the Happy Meal. He loved McDonald's. You've never seen a kid eat so many French fries. The child points. I'm only allowed to give you one, so you'll have to choose. I thought you'd appreciate getting to have a choice. It's one of the wonders of living in the US. So much choice. We choose our toothpaste, we choose our jobs, we choose our leaders. It's not like those other countries where nobody gets to choose anything. Of course, your parents made the wrong choice by trying to cross the border illegally. I don't know what they were thinking, but hopefully you'll grow up to make smarter choices. Now, which one of these do you want? Thank you very much. Three minutes on the nose, love it. Thank you so much. Um, all right, next we have uh, Mindy Levikov, uh, 
But before we bring her on, the next three readers after that will be Jane Spoken Word, Mindy Matyasevich, Matyasevich, and uh, Howard Flanzer. Did I say that already? I'm confusing myself. All right. Mindy, I have a call. Thank you. Yeah, me too. I want to thank everybody for reading and for hosting. This has been an amazing, an amazing day, a great way to start the new year. Thank you so much for all your efforts. Thank you, Matthew and everybody. So first I'm going to play, um, actually it's a chant, it's the Medicine Buddha chant to uh, try and help us deal with illness, all kinds. The next one is a poem that's also a song from my new book called Mount Eden Avenue. I'll put the information on the chat and thank you Cindy and for Cindy Hackman for helping me get this out. She's my editor. So this one is called My Six Windows, Four Directions. to go over you guys excuse me thank, thank you very much happy new year to everybody stay safe stay healthy take care thank you again thank you so much um i kind of don't know what i said a minute ago did i say jane spoken word was next jane spoken word mindy m then howard Okay, thank you. <laughs> Jane, you're up, please. Okay, please so All right, thank you, everybody. This is a wonderful day to spend, a wonderful way to spend a New Year's Day. I've just been filled with the poetry. Thank you so much. It's just been wonderful. I'm going to do one piece, and it's from my first book, and it's called Flux. For my teacher, who resides on a moon, busy contemplating contemplations 
that shaped the reality of a dimensional self. Reminders of illusionary tactics of the mind to leave you behind. Dull your shine. Spirit beings summoned by dreams, dancing to songs of celestial bodies, listening to winds whispering silent secrets. Naked minds with no dressing and the dreamer's moon laughs at my back. Ruby sparkled sky laid out on a velvet sea. Summon the moon and sweet talk the sun. Dreaming of yesterdays and Saturn's rings and diamond snows and string spinning theories of planks that travel on a shimmer of not too long ago memories. Triangle suns born of stories told, holes in time and Pharaoh's lost two days of old. I kiss the sky with rainbows gold. In the book of pages, passed down from the library of ages. Eons of particles appear and disappear, expanding into the nothingness of a consciousness long forgotten. When the night falls down upon us, the beginning of the end of the beginning of the end of the beginning of the end. When the night falls down upon us, we are all allies in the silent struggle. Happy New Year, peace and love to everybody. Beautiful, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, next we have, uh, oops. Uh, Howard Flanzer. I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me clearly? Uh, hello? Yes, Matthew, we, can, we can hear you. can hear me? Okay. I'm checking. I have three short poems to read. Orange sky. In the west, the sky glows orange, light scattered by the pollution right before the sun goes down beyond the shore. Is this a harbinger of a happier time ahead or just the precursor of another black night? Let's wait for tomorrow and see how the day progresses. Will the sky at dusk glow a brighter orange streaked with crimson or the disappearing light plunge us directly into the darkness? Marketing to the dead. When there are no more buyers for anything that remains, the malls are ghost towns, the streets are empty, and Amazon is shipping nothing. When the earth is silent, we'll have reached the perfect equilibrium. No production, no consumption, no desire for anything. Capitalism will have lost its allure. The only thing left to do is to market to the dead. We can hope they rise up from their graves and go on a buying spree, jolting the economy into life for a final spasm of glory. And now, interrogation. The cop car pulled up abruptly on Avenue D, 2 a.m. Avenue D deserted. As I walked towards 14th Street, an unmarked police car, a Chevy, three overweight white cops in jeans and flannel shirts, no IDs presented, shooting questions at me without a pause. Do you live here? What are you doing? Where are you going? Identify yourself, you bastards now. I knew they were aiming to get me. 
I was alone on the street. I bit my tongue. To them, I was a white drug dealer, not their usual dark-skinned prey. One cop started to open the car door. The radio in the car burst into life. The cops were suddenly alert. The driver gunned the engine, sped off. I stood there alone for a moment, caught my breath, and continued walking towards 14th Street, understanding clearly who the cops were that night and the deadly threat to those with dark skin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Howard. Thank you. Uh, let's try Mindy one more time, Mindy, with your video off. Let's see if that works, if that gives you enough bandwidth. If not, we will go to um, Robert Roth and then um, Chocolate Waters, Danny Schock, and Francine Witt after that. But let's try Mindy one more time. Go ahead, Mindy. Thank you. Okay. Living. Of one living alone in front of the child, put one leg on another surface, receive the fans, breeze, Phoenix, not interpreted as an invitation, a tease, a flirt. She can just get some air on her cootie in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Mindy. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Uh, what did I say? I said uh, Robert Roth next, right? Uh, Robert, please unmute yourself and off you go. Okay. Flirting in a pandemic. I see you smiling beneath that mask. I hope it's me you're thinking about. Anyone but you can bring a sparkle to my eye. You, only an exasperated sigh. Well then, I know this beautiful place by the river where we can stand apart. Okay, the second one is called um, Two Mothers. Many years ago, I attended the service of a friend much older than me, really more the sister of a friend of mine. She had been pretty much a chameleon in the last decades of her life. Her one daughter was an ultra-Orthodox Jew who lived in an ultra-Orthodox community. Her other daughter was a deeply engaged radical left lawyer. First, the Orthodox daughter spoke about her mother involvement in community activities, a very religious honored presence. The other daughter spoke about her as an agnostic, atheist, radical activist who devoted her life to various left causes and a socialist future. When the second daughter spoke, the first daughter kept pacing behind her, violently shaking her head, muttering, that's not true, that's not true, that's not true. I did everything in my power not to fall off my chair laughing, but to no avail. It was probably the most basic possible tribute to the mothers both of them had. That's it. Thank Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, next we have Chocolate Waters. Hi, everybody. Really nice to see you all. Happy effing New Year. I'm going to do uh, two poems from my new book called Muddying the Holy Waters. And believe me, I do muddy them. This is the uh, first uh, and the first and last poems from the last section, which is called The Curse and the Blessing of Mount Joy, Pennsylvania, or I'd Rather Be a Toad. The curse of Mount Joy, I ran away. Though the freedom in escaping the Christian Republican evangelists, I'd rather have been a toad. 
I pocketed my mistrust, carried it to Colorado, turned into a stomping radical dyke. I'd have gone to India and become a cow. I transformed my loathing into hating the patriarchy. Men, all of them, especially Emery, my father, narcissistic dickhead. I let mom Pauline off the hook, thought she was a victim. She was a complicit cunt. Once a year, I return at Christmas when Jesus is supposed to be there. Their Jesus who lets them love me even though they don't have a clue who I am. Uh, the essay that follows uh, that poem in the book starts out with, oh my God, I just called my mother a complicit cunt. <laughs> so you'll have to get by the book to find out the rest of that story. This is the last, uh, the last poem in the book and it's called The Blessing of Mount Joy. Two kinds of people live here, the ones who go to church and the ones who go to the bar. Had I stayed, I'd have become a raging alcoholic or a hallelujah or just climbed into my coffin and slammed the lid. These conservative folks who didn't get me or I them, they transformed me into who I was intended to be my Mountjoy family, a soul group family who travels together over countless lifetimes. Maybe next time around, I'll be the Christian Republican fundamentalist and they'll be the renegades. Thank you. I'll put the info about the book in the chat. Thank you, Chocolate. Thank you so much. Great to hear you. Thank you. Okay, uh, now we have the always delightful Francine Witt. Hey, Matthew. The always delightful Matthew. Um, Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, it's nice to see all your beautiful faces. I have two prose poems. First, in the park, it, on an afternoon when the sun goes stone and thuds itself under the horizon and the trees shake their veiny leaves like hands about to hit and the bench nearby is a gather of slats holding up the uh, elderly couple we were going to be, him spooning ice cream into her quivery mouth and not even minding the dribble. And then over there, the children on swings sailing the air as if practicing for a life of come and go. And right in the middle of this, right in the smacky center of that is you sitting there, your eyes two blackened holes, your mouth telling me about the sometimes death of love. And the second one is definition. The little boy asks his family what a lemon is. The mother, mostly apron, says, oh, I use it in my cooking, also to sprinkle on fish. The father, who is rumpled like the evening paper, says, ha, a lemon is the car your mother's brother sold me. The boy's older sister is boy drunk and says she uses lemons to bleach freckles off her face and also to blonde up her hair. The boy then asks his grandmother what a lemon is. She is round-shouldered and pucker-skinned. She only comes downstairs once a day now. Other times, she is in the attic where she lives. A tiny window, a tinier view. She says the sun is a lemon, sometimes a slice, sometimes a wedge. It fits different each day in the window, and each day a little less yellow than it was the day before. Thank you. Happy New Year.
Thank you. Thank you so much, Francine. Uh, I thought I'd said John J. Trouse after Francine, but I've just been informed I didn't say it out loud. So apparently I said it in my head, but uh, John, are you there? If you're ready, I, you're am. I am here. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Uh, John is the last reader on our list. After that, we will look to the waiting list and then we'll have some time to fill and we'll discuss that after that. But John, take it away. Very good. Adjuster John. I saw the crescent moon against the sky last night and morning star arrayed together past delight. Today, it is, it is the sun's turn to obscure the moon with brighter rays to mark the path to vast delight. The road I take to Mecca or Jerusalem runs like my journey home or I forecast delight. The way to Rome or to Medina leads to home where I compose my verses to outlast delight. So end my travels in my vast scriptorium with Hodge Tonsher intact, head bowed in fast delight. And now, um, Zoom Bomb. And it has an epigraph from the song Big Blue Marble from 1974. Some of you may remember this from PBS. The earth's a big blue marble when you see it from out there. Oh, by hubby, yabu. Fabak, garbers. Yabu, sabak. Shabbat, abak. Yabu, habab, abab, sabak, jachin, shabun. Yabba, shabbat, abab. Yabu sabak, abai habit abalaba yabu, babak abat wabat you stub abat with baby bitches, yabu abal sabak shabad abak you kavant, sabak my by dabak, yabu abas habu babak yabu. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Fabulous. Evening. So let's go to Jane's spoken word. All right, second poem. I am a poet. I am the air that I breathe. I am the words that I think take you to the break, don't blink, drink it in. Poetry is revolution, word is a sound solution for you from the institution. I am ghosting the machine. I will wake you from your dream. I will wake you. I am a poet. I pen lines with a stroke. I spit rhymes when I talk. Inner fires I will stoke, cause I ain't no joke, I am a poet. Poetry is revolution, word is a sound solution for you from the institution, I am ghosting the machine. I will wake you from your dream, I will wake you. I float bars when I write, open doors, shine a light, free your mind, free your might. You are what you think, you think what you are. Poetry is revolution, word is the sound solution for you from the institution and the delusion. I am what I know, I am what I sow. I am revolution wrapped in a straight jacket. I am poetry wrapped in a straight jacket. And I am a poet. Thank you all. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Telling people to unmute themselves on mute really doesn't work. Ron, go ahead, please. You wanted a really short, brand new one. Yes, that's exactly what I want. This one's called Absence Makes the Heart. Gertrude Stein was known to drink from time to time a tall glass of sparkling water because there was no there there. Fabulous, Ron, thank you. Uh, Sarah Sarai, I hear a word that you might want to read now, even though you're scheduled in the next slot. Is that true? Yeah. yeah you. I had my sound turned off for a second. <laughs> Roxy, so wait, so I'm going to read my poem? Yeah, sure, if you want to, go ahead. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> or you can help me look for my wallet. Okay. I've read this at various open mics, but it seems um, 
it works in the political environment. Uh, and as I've said before, I read about the siege of Stalingrad. And actually, every time I'm, I'm going on and on, every time I have to wait in line and people behind me are complaining, I think, do you know the kind of lines that people have had to wait in in Russia? And corpses and cats. During the siege of, Stalin of Leningrad, citizens ate corpses and cats. Beneath the hermitage, framers ate glue. Old women walked passageways, dark and molding, to protect treasures. What does old mean? Except a man doesn't want to fuck you. Big deal. The musical comedy theater did not shudder. A grand actress thawed makeup over a lamp. It had to go on. After one of the three musketeers dropped dead on stage, she tried to speak her lines, but couldn't for grief. The Luftwaffe bombed Soviet planes, idle on the tarmac. Stalin was a coward leader, like Trump and also a fool, who trusted Hitler and ruled from his Dhaka, while Mother R starved. Who knows quite what to say about that onion deep fried in snow? I don't, except it's people ate cats and corpses and lived. Fabulous, thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, Linda Kleinbaum wants to read a short poem and then Howard Flanzer has another one as well. Okay, this is called Suitcase. In the quiet time of evening, when the Katie did song ends, the moon still shines above. She's packing her suitcase. What will she carry home? Under the silent moon, investments made in time multiply, but they can disintegrate by astronomical charts sent via email. Everyone knows you need to look up to see the galaxy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Linda really did the, the lion's share of the work of putting all this together. So everyone just give her a thousand shouts out of appreciation because this would not be happening without her. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. I think this is such a wonderful thing that we're all together. You know, I mean, this is we're filming it. It's going to be recorded. It's gone Facebook Live. I think this is the fourth or fifth hour. And so many people, you know, are here together. It's just so beautiful. You know, we've been so isolated the whole year. So, you know, just like take this and be positive and take it with you, you know, forward. And let's hope 2021 is, you know, things gonna be more fun at least, right? So thanks for being here. We can never do this without you guys. You know, the success of this show is because all you guys came. All right, so Howard Flanzer has another, then Francine Witt has another, and then maybe I'll stick in one of mine even because what the hell I can. And, uh, and then I think we'll take a little bit of a break and wait for, uh, we'll uh, shift it over to Roxanne, who's our next host, and we'll get rolling then. So um, Howard, Francine, then I'll figure out something for me to read. And uh, yeah, like that. Okay, uh, this is called Advertisement for a Hitman. Wanted, a fearless person, for dangerous mission, target very well guarded, extraordinarily well paid, great job satisfaction. A mission of great urgency to save the world from utter destruction. Details on in a special secret briefing. When survived, you will be protected so one, no one will know where you are. Only those with a passion to kill the target need to apply. Could it be you who saves humanity? Thank you. Um, oh, okay. Uh, um, so uh, I have a, a kind of a theory that uh, all the trouble in the world is because uh, nature is trying to like get back at us and basically say a few. Um, so this is my poem called How the Trouble Started. First, the, the earth lifted its shoulders into mountains. 
then flat ground went prickly with moss. The stars above buzzed electric in the night curtain. The ocean licked the land, and that's when man crawled out, two-legged fish with opposable thumbs, fashioning tools, touching everything he saw, looking around for more when there was little left to do, his fingers starting to itch. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Francine. Thank you. All right, I'm going to read just a quick one of mine here. Um, along with Jane Omrod and several other people, I was actually really honored. I won the, uh, I was one of the winners of the 2020 Acker Award, which, of course, the one year I win is the year that there's like, you know, a pandemic and there's no ceremony and no one knows anything happens. But such is life in pandemic. But uh, I am really honored to have been uh, selected and it was for my hosting uh, of poetry readings that I got it. And, uh, as I said, Jane Oberon, a lot of other really uh, great people won this year. But uh, for the um, for the award, I gave in a, a chapbook of poems based on Camus, on quotes of Camus. So I want to read one of those now. I'm not going to butcher the uh, epigram, which was in French. So I'll read you the English translation of that and then the poem. The epigram was. Life can be beautiful and overwhelming. That's its tragedy. No beauty, love, or danger, and life would be almost easy to live. Uh, and then the poem is called Cherry Stained Oak. There's a semicircular scratch on the floor, an arc traced by a slightly maladjusted door that becomes deeper each time one of us comes or goes. The arc has become almost every day unseen in the manner of things we see every day and that we never have to ask if this time is the last time we will scratch the scar deeper is the shape I want to live with you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. This has been really a stupendous uh, couple hours. Uh, I am so honored to have hosted the quality of talent that came through here. I'm humbled by the voices. Um, hopefully this next year will be better than this last year was. Let's get to the other side of this nonsense. Uh, fuck Donald Trump. I hope to never see his fucking face again. And uh, just love and happy new year to everybody. Everyone feel free to unmute yourselves. We're going to take a little bit of break. I'm going to make uh, Roxy the official host and we'll pick up again at eight o'clock. Love you all. Happy new year to you all. Thank you.